Hey guys, Spud here, and today we have a video that documents some of the most, if not the most intense milsim that can be found in the DCS world community. Welcome to the DCS Red Flag Group, an invite-only community that pushes the boundaries of realism within DCS world in the name of educating members of individual squadrons that are invited to participate. So that way they can return to their squadrons and transfer those lessons learned to their other members. These lessons go beyond just flying skills and include things like mission planning, administrative tasks, briefing and debriefing skills, along with a host of many others. Pilots, planners, and controllers are expected to have a deep knowledge of their aircraft, and in some cases, aircrafts, plural, for planners. Tactics, administrative functions, and IFR procedures up to US military, FAA, and ICAO standards. Many of the voices you'll be hearing are professional pilots, both military and civil, professional controllers, aviation professionals outside of the cockpit, and some awesomely skilled and knowledgeable DCS World Super fans in all of the different mission roles. One of the delicate parts of these missions is giving pilots and controllers enough wiggle room to make mistakes and get punished for those mistakes, while still fostering a fun and great learning experience, with fun being the operative word. In the name of that goal, in this mission, I was flying as an element lead instead of the Dash 1, and you'll hear me try to hold back from overcorrecting my flight lead, which in my opinion was pretty funny to kind of listen to myself doing but it was a great learning experience for him in how to read a holding pattern diagram. This is just one small instance of many different lessons learned by all of those participating, including many for myself as well. Unfortunately, in both of the red flag missions I have attended, I have been killed. In the first one, it was because I did something monumentally stupid. I disregarded the WES of an SA-8 because I thought I was flying too high for it to engage me. In the second one here, I was ultimately at fault because I was the one who got shot down by the player control red air, but my and the rest of the strike flight's misfortunes at the hands of the player controlled red air gave the offensive counter air and airborne intercept controllers or AICs a fantastic learning opportunity, which is what these missions are of course all about. The ATC and AIC staff were of course filled out by the very awesome guys and gals of the Digital Controllers, another subgroup dedicated entirely to ATC, GCI, and AIC services, and you can check them out in the link down below. Thanks guys, and enjoy the video. This briefing that we're doing right now is going to go until 11.30. We'll brief it, I'll show the kneeboards, uh, we can ask any questions that pertain to everybody. Uh, and then we'll break out into a tactical and flight brief, so you guys will break out into your roles. OCA can talk about OCA stuff together, Seed, Strike, Deed, and all the ATC guys can talk together. I'll stay up here and answer any questions for a little bit after that as well. Mission's going to unpause at 11.45, so 45 minutes from now um, is when the server's going to unpause. You'll be able to have joined the mission beforehand, unpause, and then you can decide when you want to take off. Uh, so then just a rough timeline of the game. 50 minutes after unpause is when the Katrina starts, so that's when the OCA guys are going to fight. Uh, about 50 minutes after that is Miller time, and then uh, about 45 minutes after that is when we expect the mission to be completely done. So you can tell your uh, friends that you can be hanging out with them after 2 o'clock. Situation today, we've got a... A red land here, they're being bad and we're going to destroy their military capacity. Uh, the major blue goal is to destroy IADs and command structure, and the player red 4 will be acting as red DCA. A um, couple of tanker tracks here, the martial limit line, no fly zone in the container. If you fly into this container, you will be severely punished and or explode. Uh, we've got a man pad zone here with uh, special Chinese man pads that do a raster scan and find you even though it's pitch black outside. So we want to cut off the Serpent's Head by destroying the uh, C2 HQ and uh, Radom's Palace uh, and as much enemy air power as possible. Mission's going to start at 0400 Zulu. Uh, there's something weird with the uh, F-15Es where if you um, look at their system time it'll say 0300 and it may not be correct but the analog clock on the F-15 is correct on local time. 
Uh, it's going to be a moonless night. Winds out of the west, gusting 4 to 15. Not really, but you can pretend that they gust to 15. Uh, we're going to try to push red air back and pin, pin the red regen field to allow the strike to pass through. That's going to be the whole goal of everybody. Because it's going to be so dark and there are going to be F-16s on both sides, uh, red and blue, uh, we need to make sure that we're IFFing our targets and not just shooting at generic areas where F-16 uh, radars are coming from. So make sure that you uh, TMS left for the Viper guys and uh, whatever the button is for the Hornet guys to find if that guy's a good guy or a bad guy. Uh, and also, please try not to get into furballs. Backpedal your way out. Uh, and don't make ray gun calls on strike because everyone's going to be mad at you for clogging everything up. All right, everyone's going to be parked over here on these northwest ramps, uh, and you're just going to taxi down into these uh, stack-up parking lots, uh, or uh, holding spots, to do any final uh, system checks of your airplanes, and then you're going to be cleared by a tower to go ahead and take off. Um, so yeah, just fill in there from uh, by instructions from ground, contact tower when you're ready, and then they'll push you out. And then we're all going to be taking off uh, runway 3 left, most likely. Uh, departure, we're using uh, the Dream 6 departure like we usually do. You have the waypoints for um, Atolf and Juno, and then also Dream. Uh, so OCA flights are actually going to push uh, Adolf, Juno, and then through Devil's Gap out towards like Mormon Mesa. Or sorry, not Mormon Mesa, Mormon Peak. Um, and then head to their northern hold points. Um, and then everyone else is going to push Juno to Dream for their uh, martial holds. Uh, expect to be, after you pass Juno, uh, expect to be pushed over to Taxi 2. Uh, this is in your knee board, so you'll be able to reference this as well. Uh, Quantify, can you talk a little bit about the hold that you want? Yep, so we have a lot of aircraft to recover today, so initially it's likely you'll be put in a hold. If you are, make sure it's an inbound track of 178 to Arco, outbound track 358, don't exceed 310 knots, and make left turns of one minute legs. You'll be assigned an altitude to maintain before you go into the hold. If you're ILS capable, you'll be released in flights of two, so make sure you brief with your flight to understand how you're sectioning out your flight. If you're ILS incapable, you're all going to go individually, so make sure you're prepared and all listening. Um, if you're confused by radius of left, and there's a big, uh, the small example there. Go next slide. Uh, also, the uh, Arco waypoint is going to be a waypoint in everyone's jet. Unless you're yep. at 14. Unless you're at 14. So for the ILS approaches, they're going to be PAR monitored. Um, so you'll be talking to Nellis Talkdown, and you'll actually switch to tower once you're on the ground rather than when you're in the air. Uh, we can have three sections of two aircraft flying the ILS simultaneously, and we'll separate you out. If you're taking a precision approach radar, you'll receive a full talkdown from Nellis Talkdown, and you'll be the only one receiving a PAR at a time. If Nellis Talkdown just gives an instruction without a call sign, that means it's for you. If they give a call sign, then that means you're on the ILS. And if once you've arrived, make sure you roll the full length of the runway. This is for all aircraft. So make sure you try and vacate as quickly as possible. That's our limiting factor here. Yeah, That's vacate as quickly as possible, but at the end of the runway. Yep. Uh, so next slide, please. And for missed approaches, uh, you should report the go around as soon as you can. If you have a runway in sight during the go around, report that as well. If you do, we can put you in for left traffic. Otherwise, you'll get a full. Uh, sorry, you'll get a full radar vector out to try the approach again. That's all from me. All right, sweet. Uh, quick look at the uh, area of operations here. We have the Marshall limit line where everyone's going to be marshalling on uh, east-west legs uh, off of your Marshall point. Uh, the Marshall limit line, if you cross that point, Red Air is going to decide to start shooting at you. Uh, bullseye here on the northeast corner of the container. Um, and we have the Tonopah... Uh, Regen field up here in the top left, and then the targets that everyone is trying to blow up down here at the bottom of Redland. Uh, there's also a red uh, AWACS here that OCA may or may not want to blow up. Uh, oh, and then the man pad threat with their special Chinese man pads that see in the dark. Uh, yeah. So the Marshall altitude blocks are going to be assigned by Taxi 2 on check-in. Uh, you may have another flight on the same altitude block, but there's geographic separation by roll. So OCA are going to be at the top, then strike, then seed, and then the A-10s are down here at the bottom. Uh, and the A-10s are going to be down low, 
And A-10s, you guys are going to push from the Marshall low level as you go in. Uh, airspace notes, Nell's departure will hold you until you pass that Juno point, uh, at which point they'll push you to taxi too. We already said that, but I just want to re remind everybody. Uh, enemy order of battle, uh, the Red 4 have F-16s, and they will have 8 to 10 F-16s. Um, I think I decided that there's going to be 10 of them to have parity, but there's uh, fewer people so that you can't have all 10 up at the same time. There is a SA-6 in the general area of Tonopah. There are SA-2s to the west of Tonopah and southwest of the targets. Man pads in that, uh, contain in that designated zone, a lot of them. And uh, HQ-7s, those are uh, s similar to like SA-8s uh, in look. And they're going to be near the targets, and they're going to be uh, coordinates given to the A-10s to go blow them up before anyone uh, has to worry about them. All right, the phase game plan, this uh, mission is going to act in two phases. We have Katrina phase and Irene phase. Katrina phase is going to start at 0450 Zulu, 50 minutes after mission start. And the length of it is determined by how good OCA is doing. Um, if OCA just immediately claps the cheeks of all the red air, um, then the Katrina phase will be short. And to make sure that we get the strike moving before um, the red four takes off again, uh, we're going to call Irene and get those guys moving. Uh, Irene is either going to be called by the um, uh, Bud 1-1, one, one, or it's going to be called by Taxi 2. Either way, the striker guys, you're going to hear it from Taxi 2. Um, and the, just to make sure that no one runs out of gas, we have a backstop of 10 minutes on Katrina phase. So if they're still battling it out and they haven't knocked down to two uh, red air fighters, um, they're going to go ahead and push Irene phase anyway. Shove you guys down the down the pipeline. ALR extreme. Yep. And then uh, Taxi 2 is going to round Irene to the nearest whole minute just to make it uh, easier to do the math. Um, all right, phase Katrina. At 0450 is when Katrina starts, and OCA is going to start crossing the Marshall line. But because A-10s are so slow, we have to push them a little bit early. So they're going to push uh, six minutes beforehand, uh, and push low level towards their IP. They know where their IP is. Um, and I'll mention it again when we get there. Uh, the point at which red air and blue air forces meet should be beyond where the A-10s are at that moment, six minutes later. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the A-10 guys. Uh, OCA lead is going to be monitoring when there's only two red fighters remaining or that Katrina plus 10 backs up. Taxi 2 is going to be doing the same thing. Uh, and about... 15 minutes after the A-10s push, they're going to establish at their IP. Um, yeah. So you're going to just freak all the red air out, make them freak out. Uh, the time, you're going to have to do the math off the uh, declared Irene time. Uh, Taxi 2 is going to help you guys do that math as well. But uh, So Irene gets declared. Seed has one minute to uh, get their shit together and push from the marshal uh, one minute after Irene is declared. Uh, so Seed starts pushing. Um, they're going to help with shoot red air if they need to, but uh, they're going to start shooting harms at Sam's. So that way when the strike guys push a little bit behind, uh, they mez pin while those Sam's are getting uh, whacked with harms. And then they have a strike window of uh, plus 14 to plus 19. So that's a five minute strike window to get about um, 10 jets through, 10-ish jets. And uh, the A-10s are going to kill those uh, short-range air defenses in a three-minute window before the, um, the, uh, the striker guys actually get there. Because if they get there and they're still alive, that'd be not, not, uh, not happy. Um, yeah, and then the A-10s are going to egress. Strikers are going to one-pass, haul-ass, hopefully. If you need to take a second pass, that's okay. If you need to take a third pass, don't do it and just leave. Um, and then these seed guys are going to pin the Sams and Tonopah, and they're also going to probably cover everyone's egress here. Um, and then a hard Miller time of plus 32. If it sounds like everyone's already leaving, you can leave a little bit earlier. There's no worries. All right, target imagery for the target guys. Uh, we've got Redland uh, C2 HQ up here. This is the Cowboy 1 attack. Uh, Red Lane Logistics, this is for the F-14s, and then Chief 2 is going to take the uh, Radom's Palace down here. 
Uh, the F-15E flights have all three targets as waypoints to shuffle around if required. For Cowboy 1, this is the, uh, the C-2. You've got three dimpies. Uh, you can pretend whatever these buildings are, whatever you want. But the center building we're pretending is a church, and this is off limits from strike, so don't blow this up. This uh, picture is in your knee board, so you'll be able to reference it. Uh, for the south uh, side, we've got the Radom's Palace. Uh, is Palace Compound. Uh, the north building, we're just going to drop two bombs on the east side and west side. In the south building, we need to hit just this um, southeast wing of the building because Radam's children and harem of 72 wives are located in the other wings. If they <laughs> all explode, that's fine with me, but just kind of aim for this spot. Uh, and then the F-14s are going to take the logistics facility. There is uh, a lot of ammo or something here, and then more ammo or something here. If you have leftover bombs, you can dump them in the parking lot in the middle here. All right, for the red guys, um, and for everyone else to know what the red player rules are, red players, uh, this isn't going to be Airquake. It's not like Growling Sindwinder, where we're just going to start throwing jets at each other and bonsai every two seconds. Um, so the red players have a little bit of rules here. Uh, they're not going to use any ECM. They're not going to multi-target track and twiz launch four AMRAMs at an entire wave of people all at once. Uh, they've got a loadout that's set to four AMRAMs and two AIM-9s, and they have ten jets to use. So there's only six of us, I think. Um, so the first four that die get to respawn, uh, and then after that, there's no more, like, you ran out of uh, respawns. If we determine that you guys have ab absolutely booty schwacked us and we want to give you something to do towards the end, uh, we might send a 1z, 2z out of uh, the red regen just to have you schwack it down. Um, red players may backpedal outside of the uh, zone here, the red land zone, uh, but they got to come back in through the this way that they backpedaled out. Uh, so they can't backpedal out and then swing wide north and then come down from the north. That would just defeat the purpose. Um, so no sneak attack wraparounds. And then if the red AOX dies, the red AIC comms will stop. Uh, if you guys want to kill that guy. But if you try to kill him, we're going to bonsai the shit out of you. Alright, OCA playbook. You got the pre vol phase. Uh, we're going to try to have one flight AAR. Just so you guys can try to um, have a little bit extra gas at the beginning. Uh, but you guys can change that up as you need. You're going to push at the start of Katrina 0450. Uh, pushing from Marshall, expect launch and leave set, so uh, shoot your missiles and, it, like a skate. Shoot your missile, crank, and then get out. Um, OCA lead is going to claim Irene, or the uh, Taxi 2 is going to claim Irene, uh, when either two red fighters are still airborne, or Katrina plus 10. Uh, the Irene phase, so that you guys, uh, after you kind of shake things up here, and then the strikers are coming. You want to keep this lane open around here where the striker's going to be flooding through. So you're going to make sure that you're pinning uh, ahead of that. So pinning Tonopah here. Uh, and then you can yo-yo to the tanker as necessary and egress uh, Irene plus 27. Seed playbook. Uh, Disco 1, I'd recommend air-to-air uh, -air refuel beforehand. Uh, Gambler 2 is going to be standby reserve for OCA, so if OCA uh, needs extra jets, they can call in for that. Uh, Disco 1 is going to plan to pin these North Sams as the OCA requires um, if they need to help pin uh, Tonopah. So if the OCA is trying to chase this guy down and they keep running into the Sam uh, edge, shoot some harms in there. Uh, Gambler 2, because their shit is a little more uh, timed out, they're going to shoot their uh, pet shots at the SA-2 at um, Irene plus 11, so that it times out at Irene plus 13 when the strikers are going to start mez pinning. Uh, and then Gambler 2, you're going to stay on station to keep the SAM down here suppressed until the strike is complete. Uh, and then Disco 1 is going to cover the OCA egress. Uh, pre vol phase for the strike guys, you guys are just going to establish martial sort targets. F-15s have a ton of gas. Uh, so I don't expect you guys to need to refuel at all. Uh, Katrina phase, you guys are also just still going to hold Marshall. Uh, and then you're going to push at Irene plus 4, so that you can mez pin at Irene plus 13, and then strike window 14 to 19. Max 2 passes. I'd recommend you take your passes kind of north to south-ish here. Uh, crank left, and then if you need to come back in, you loop it back around, and then crank right and out. 
So try not to go deep, uh, deep west into Redland. All right, the A10 guys. Um, this is kind of a weird tasking. You're basically acting as the uh, Red Storm Rising uh, frisbees, the stealth A10s. Um, so the pre-vol phase, you guys are going to request words from Vacuum. So Taxi Two will let you know when Vacuum has any information for you. Um, and you'll push over to the vacuum frequency, and he'll let you know the location of the HQ-7 SAMs near the target area with, uh, like, Cat-1 coordinates. Uh, you're going to push at 0444, uh, Katrina minus 6, and then you're going to go low level on route to the IP, uh, which is going to be this waypoint, waypoint 8. Hold here until you uh, can kill, the, kill all the guys in this time frame of Irene plus 10 to Irene plus 13. Uh, and then you're going to egress low level back towards uh, Alamo and go home. Um, all the vehicles in and near the target area are declared hostile, so if you have extra Mavs and you want to shoot more vehicles, uh, just dump, mm -hmm. dump them. Alright, and then the red DCA, we're going to plan our strategies away from blue after this uh, brief. Uh, and we're going to... Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention for everybody, there are a lot of waypoints here. And this is my um, idea to try to add um, objects onto your HSI and HSDs. So you have the drawn-out box of the container and the drawn-out squiggles of the manpad zone on your container, uh, on your uh, HSD. Um, but all of your first waypoints... Uh, the main, like, 0 to 10 waypoints will take you through and back home, and then all the big number waypoints are drawing these pictures out for you. Uh, the red players have their waypoints set to draw out the entire red land um, zone, and then also the container and the main pad zone. Uh, red comms are given here. Sorry, my head. Radio, radios are coalition locked, so I don't get any bright ideas. All right, cool. Uh, interacting with AIC, just a couple of pictures here if you guys uh, needed rec uh, reminders. We got range, azimuth, ladder, wall, Vic, and champagne that you might or might not hear from the AIC today. Uh, OCA comms calls. Uh, this is the expectation for a strike common. AIC is going to be giving everybody picture calls, and he's going to be listening for target and FOX-3 calls. The mission commander is going to be listening for the progress of the mission and directing OCA in and out, flights to attack, uh, spin strikers if need to, and Rolexing TOTs. That's what the mission commander is going to say. OCA, everyone else, is uh, listening for those picture calls. They're going to give their pushing call. Targeting calls uh, with bulls and group, and then FOX-3 calls with bulls and group. Um, if it's quiet, you can also give a pit bull and timeout. Uh, seed guys are li listening for the general air picture, Rolex TOTs. They're going to say they're pushing calls and magnum calls. Strike guys are listening for general air picture, Rolex TOTs. Uh, and they're going to call their pushing call from Marshall and strike complete. And with the um, strike, nothing else, right? No paveway, none of that stuff. No paveway. We don't need to hear that for everybody. Yeah, Just, figured. Yep. You can say that within your group, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I have this up. I'm not going to go over this, uh, but basically, when you're talking in an entire strike, uh, you don't have to say strike, bud one. You can just say bud one, targeted north group. All right, OCA, rough ideas. Uh, launch and leave. All you guys know this, I'm sure, um, but the idea is uh, if you don't bust Mar and you just run away, uh, you're not going to have a missile hit you. Um, don't be slamming jets all the way in and uh, dying needlessly. Um, yeah, and then we have a couple of recommended Mars for everyone. So if the target is at high altitude, don't bust 16 miles to the target. Medium altitude, 14 miles. Low altitude, 12 miles. I'll let you decide what you think high, medium, and low is. All right, support assets. We have four tankers in the air and one AWACS for blue guys. Red guys aren't going to kill these things. It, it, it'd just be not fun. Uh, Arco tankers are all MIPPERS tankers, and the shell tankers are all BOOM uh, Air Force tankers. 
Uh, last digit ones for the south tankers, last digit twos for the uh, north tankers. Uh, only one OCA flight and one seed flight will pre volt tank. That's the plan. If you guys want to change that up a little bit, uh, that's fine with me. Uh, all of this is in your kneeboard, so you should be able to tell where the tankers are. And Taxi 2 will help you. Uh, we have a comms ladder that is pre-programmed into the jet. It's this. Everyone has the same comms for whatever their UHF radio is. Um, so we can uh, power in things. We'll just tell you to push channels um, or frequencies, and you can just push the channels yourself. Uh, Taxi 2 is going to be Focus, and the blue AIC is going to be Dark Star. Uh, they're on these frequencies. And we've got all the uh, tankers loaded in as well. Uh, you have recommended interflight frequencies uh, down here. This is uh, from the sign-up sheet. It is also in an, uh, a knee board like this picture is here. Uh, if you guys want to split your flight into two two ships, that's fine with me. You can just add a five to the end of your interflight frequency and uh, just use Yankee tachyons and X-ray tachyons to split one and two and then three and four. Um... Yeah, we're also going to do a roll call uh, about five minutes before push time, or maybe a little sooner, depending on when they want. Uh, roll call is going to be given, and then you're going to go down the line here and just check in. Flight leads are going to say, all right, Bud 1, <coughs> Miller 2, Course 3, Disco 1, Gambler 2, just so they know everyone's here. Uh, if something's wrong with your shit, uh, just say Cowboy 1 with remarks, and then at the end, after they've gone through everything, they can circle back to you and uh, see what was going on. Hey, Ricky. As it Hey, what? Sorry, I was just putting out a fire. Uh, what time is that checking? Where is that? Um, that'll be on taxi two frequency. Uh, about anywhere five to ten minutes before uh Katrina time. So o four forty to o four forty five. Copy. Uh, wind conditions for this mission: all DPIs are hit within the strike window. Um, zero blue on blue. So really watch your blue on blues here. Don't fire missiles into fur balls and uh, don't be doing crazy shit. Zero blue losses not due to red action. It is really dark, so I would really prefer to have people not crash into uh, to terrain or any avoidable accidents like crashing into each other. Um, that would constitute a loss on your part. OCA flights are allotted 50% uh, attrition, so two out of four max OCA losses. Strikers, uh, you guys aren't supposed to die. Everyone's supposed to be protecting you. So you guys have a max uh, one out of four losses. Um, and the learning objectives for this mission are maintaining SA in a night environment, positive sorting of air threats to make sure that you don't let squeakers squeak through, uh, and then to do a full-on ILS approach to landing or a, a PAR talk down with a full-up ATC. Uh, last thing, emergency and Nordo procedures. If your SRS for some reason doesn't work, uh, you can squawk 7600 um, and land at any airport except Nellis, uh, predictably. And then if you uh, have any other emergency, you can just land or deslot. Doesn't bother me too much. Uh, any bullshit DCSism desyncs, you're allowed to reslot if you have the time to rejoin with your flight. If you die, uh, you can respawn to fly out and do that approach for fun anyway, since we got all the guys here um, to give yourself a little bit of fun there. All right. Three minutes. Questions. Only flight leads. Yep. Yeah, I just want to confirm <clears throat> for admin-wise, uh, we will be la like we'll be giving clearance to land with fighters still on the runway, um, and we're not waiting until they are completely cleared off, right? If it comes to it, we can clear them one ahead, but we'd prefer not to. We probably won't have to. So, like, I know for, like, Air Force-wise, I don't know about any other branches, but I know U.S. Air Force, uh, we can, like, we get clearances to land with other fighters in front of us. Uh, so that's, like, a pretty standard thing. So that, that will dramatically increase the, the uh, speed at which you can recover aircraft. And, like, uh, just for your essay, that would definitely be something we should do. Also, go ahead. Just to add on to that, it's it's usually an airfield specific thing, and um, there's all kinds of reduced runway requirements for specifically flights, and then also for between flights if it's you know military for recovering a large force exercise, uh, like like in this example. Yeah, no, exactly. It, it definitely does vary. Uh, I know at Nellis they definitely do that. Um, but to move on for 
enemy most likely course of action. The uh, Intel has just um, brought some documents out stating that there most likely will be an airborne cap between two to five fighters uh, with alert aircraft sitting waiting for uh, potential launches, just for your essay. Do we have a uh, backup plan in case the OCA gets uh, dismantled? Yeah, push the strikers anyway and hope. Gotcha. Yeah, plus seed is also a backup OCA. All right, I got several things. I'll try to be quick here. Um, quantify, are you guys accepting TACAN approaches? Oh, we can do, yeah. Okay, sweet. We already talked about the reduced runway thing. Sweet. Uh, A-10s, what altitude are you guys actually going to be expecting to be at? Quote, unquote, low-level ingress. Uh, 200 AGL. Okay, sweet. I love it. Um, clarification, west border for the red when they're backpedaling out. Uh, does that include that slanty northwest border, or can they not come through that? Yeah, they can... They can push out that way. Can come through that. All right, sweet. Um, and then, hello, Bud11 here. Easy, your quote unquote mission commander. Um, so that'll be fun. Just, uh, I ha I'll have some notes for the OCA that will follow up in a second, but just expect that you'll be uh, hearing like the Irene calls and stuff like that coming out of Bud11 on the strike frequency. Um, and then uh, we'll be working very closely with Taxi2. Uh, one note for everybody as well Miller Flight, Fallout, they are folded into Bud Flight at this point. Look okay. out. I've got the knee boards here just to show everyone. These are all in your jets. Um, and I also posted a PDF of them up in the uh, briefing thing if you wanted to print them off for posterity. All right, let's go ahead and break out everyone into their roles. Down at the bottom of this Discord, I've got OCA, Seed, Strike, Deed, and Red 4, and then the ATC guys. Uh, if you need to break out into individual flights, there's also a bunch of interflight um, channels down low. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Go ahead and break out and uh, sort your shit. As ground got back to Cowboy One. Cowboy One, that was ground. That was ground. Cowboy One's ready to taxi zero through up. Cowboy One, clear back to lower stream six, three left, Q and H two nine and decimal nine and two. Taxi, Alpha North VOR via Foxtrot. For taxi, Alpha North VOR 2902, include the Dream 6 departure 0 3 left, Cowboy 1. Right, one. one. Chief 2, monitor tower 327, decimal 1, and call ready. Chief 2, monitor tower. So the north one, so will be upstream. Pull on ground, Panther 4 1. Request taxi. Alpha 4, clear back to another stream 6. Runway 3 left, Q and H 2 9, decimal 9 2. Taxi, Alpha North EOR via Foxtrot.
Good with five. Two's five. Five. Sounds good. So, five seconds spacing. Uh, looks like the point where we're going to intersect is 1.4 miles off of the runway. We're counting the runway is going to be like 0.5 off the runway. Uh, it'll be an immediate left turn direct. Extra air to air mode. It's just uh, spinning, can't see it. We'll do 
Just rolling takeoff. Keep do ready for takeoff, zero three left. Panther 4-1, 
on the tower, uh, ready for departure. Pantos flight winds from 45 at 4. Runway 03 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 03 left, Phantom 41. Kind of left. Two. Three. Tower hand us off yet? Yeah, we're all at departure push button four. Ten flights, contact Nellis. Two 
20 pounds. Now, uh, 3 and 4, 20,000, 1 and 2, 19. 19, got it, thanks. Gonna call the office. I don't recall from the briefing how long did they want the legs in the marshal hold? I heard one minute. Copy. One minute sounds right. Yeah, I thought that was for the hold for uh, waiting for the ILS. How long do they want the hold, the uh, legs for the hold at Marshall? Double check. I'll level off 19. Freeze level 2, sir, sir.
copies. Disco 1-1. One, one. Uh, lead, say your last. Kempler, 2. Cowboy, 1. Chief, 2-1. Sorry, checking this out. No one second. Panto, correction, Panther, 4-1. Hawk 6. Hawk 7. Dog 1-1. One, one. Expect Katrina in 1-0 Mike. Uh, yeah, set relation code, so I'm showing 1611, 2, should be 12, 13, 14, so on. Reset, 1613. Yeah, 1113, focus, uh, continue to marshal. 4 set, 1 to come back. Rejoin the rest of your set. 1612, 1612. 267. 4 3 left slightly for lateral separation from 1 and 2. I'm just coming left slightly to keep lateral separation from you guys. I was getting over the top of it. Copy. Yeah, I got you visual. Well, we're out. We're okay. Legal. Oh, yeah, I know. I just want to keep my side, side of you guys. For sure. Two mics to hold. Checks. What's the waypoint number for our targets? sure to keep to our altitude sets so that way we can uh, not run into each other over the target area. That's ideal. Hard flights focus. Hey, I'm not getting you on uh, 16 on 16 feet. Contact vacuum channel 6 forwards. Vacuum on 6 hard. Just not letting me reset steer point five. There it goes, never mind. Yeah, for good holding etiquette, I would uh, kill off the uh, auto sequence. I expect me to be 300 in that range. I got. Uh, 
we're past the whole point. It's all good. Yeah, I don't think one minute really works for how close the hold line we are. Uh, we'll extend a little bit longer on this one and then try to get us sorted from there. Three, what's your HP? Three ten. Lead, are you doing a north south hold? Uh, essentially, yeah. So I'm just following the tracks to 658 inbound or outbound to the 178 inbound. We're currently 178. Uh, I didn't, wasn't the brief for a east west hold? That'll make for an easy entry for you as well. Yeah. Good catch. Yep, I'm doing the wrong thing. Don't let me kill you. <laughs> uh, forward direct steer point five, twenty thousand. Spent too much time in the casino last night. Spent all night with these damn fires, man. Please stay your seat. Uh, it's slowing it back down to 3.30. Sorry, I got a little fast on you. Coming left, heading zero nine zero, entering the hole. Walk on roll out there, your five, and starting left hand south or east of west hole. Did it again.
traffic. 11 o'clock high. Two seven zero. Forward with you. Coming left, two seven zero. One. Two's in. It'll be interesting to look deep into Red Landistan with radar on the inbound leg. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I want to sleep at night, I'm not going to do that. He's rolling out two steps here. Here come the bandits. Ooh, single ship. They're spread out pretty far. Looks like they want to spread everybody out. Freeze coming left, heading 090. Now six bandits up in the air. Uh, 
I'm not even looking at that yet. Where are you seeing them on? Radar. I was just IFF and like crazy. So it's fun to hear what like people have up on their stuff. Yeah, I got a TSD on the left, two's in the middle, and an HSI on the right. Yeah, I got a HUD repeater on left, two, a TSD in the middle, and HSI on right for nav. Interesting. Screw you guys, I'm just looking at that A slash A065. I mean, that's what I'm doing as well. <laughs> Roll now, zero, nine, zero. Poison. Ooh, that was a beautiful hole. We must not have much wind up here. Just flying it by hand. Yeah. But you meant like the thing held on nice. I was like, how are, how are you doing this? Nah, my brain worked well for the hold though. I'm jealous. Not a good brain day for me today. <laughs> uh, come in slight right for a correction. some BDA and see where you want to put your bombs. Very blocked, go ahead. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, four from three. Uh, go for like a five nautical mile trail and that way you can get some BDA and see where to put your bombs. Defense 22 9. I 
Yeah, checks. Chambler copies to Rona push button. Rona 270. Also Rona 270. Hit me off. Checks. Confirm. Uh, guys, recommend pre-positioning your targeting pod slave to your target point. Strike call signs focus. Expect to push in two minutes. All right, slowing down, guys. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let my timer say two minutes. It's your five. Three and four are just slightly out in front of you guys, um, so we'll pull back as well. Copy, you're coming right, direct your five. First left, I don't know why I said right, coming left, direct your five. I didn't want to say anything more. Plenty of separation north of the box here. Two bandits on radar, 80 nautical miles out. Scratch that, three bandits on radar, 80, 80 ish nautical miles out. Blue D5 is about to push uh, the. Uh, uh, the set. We're two oh, and one. Cowboy Chief Panther, recommend push at the set. I read plus one. Cowboy push. Country forward one, push in. Direct steer six, that'll keep us north of the box. Hey, for we're direct steer six this time. Okay. Four three four additional threat bra two eight zero twenty thirty two thousand track east hostile viper targeted by bud flight. Copy. Bud one two fox three bulls at two seven six four four two. So just for clarification, uh, uh, viper we're going to set the flights from this point up. Okay. Close three four skidding. Let's go 350 in here. Bud 1 1, a picture, three groups, north group, bullseye 274, 39, 28, 19,000, Viper, two contact maneuver. West group, bullseye 253, 42, 18,000, Viper, single contact. So you're saying it's 350 indicated? South group, bandit, bullseye 232, 58, 21,000, Hawkeye, track southeast. Three 
Cell call when established, two mile trail. Follow on target, Bravo 2027, 29,000, deem north, hostile Viper. So, buddy spike F-18. Buddy Spike F-18. Yeah, I was wondering why I was shaking so much. Yeah, broke it, but I was annoyed and F-18 me up. Contact at 254 step 25,000. Back up to 19, 434, hostile Viper, we need him from the A-10. Call Street 4, company. Yeah, we got... Uh, looks like maybe two Station bandits. Start, new picture, north group, One bandit trail, between us 14. and our target. Our One bandit to the west of our target. One bandit north west. of the target. Trail arm, 14,000, same type, same track. West group, bullseye 246, 39, 25,000, Viper, single contact, track southwest, targeted by cores 34. South group, bandit, bullseye 229, 51, 21,000, Hawkeye, single contact maneuver. Can you confirm you at 350? Uh, negative 330. Yep. Still slightly early. Recommend we do a spin here at waypoint 6. Check. Spin in left. One three spinning left. Uh, got plenty of room from the north of the box. Four zero. Sorry, five minutes. Sorry, read five minutes. Sure. A firm. I'd rather be a little bit late if those hogs are having trouble with the H seven though. But one one reset. Agreed. Looks like the bandits are down. On flight, uh, Dark Star Roger, you looking to rejoin tanker? We're shot 300 on time to steer 7. Stand by. Copy. We're 3 4, threat maneuver, bro. 4 5, 23, 37,000, light for single contact. Thank you. 
Two's on there. Uh, we got F 16s off to our right hand side. Don't know if they're bad. 19,000 Viper maneuvering. Three, say your speed. Uh, too fast, thank you. Uh, coming back down to 330. Gambler flight, Dark Star, threat broad 240, 10, 10,000 Viper maneuvering. Bandits to the west of the target area. Bandits to the north of the target area. 16, 8,000 Viper, threat to Gambler. Target's in sight, one's got left, or correction, right target. Two, you get the north target. Three, you're on the south target. Of Cross Street, cross the target at contact end at Fox Street. Copy that, three's on the right. south target. Yeah, it, it's a cover current vehicle. I'll give a big shot on friendly use pop-up uh, threat bullseye, 274, 47, 18,000 okay. Viper. I'm going to bypass the IP point. I've got uh, bandits to the northern side of target area. Just go 1-1, one, one, threat broad. Uh, there we are. 13, 23,000, trail arm, viper, uh, we were on friendly. Just go for Cowboy 1-1, one, one, merged, viper, 155, 2, 6,000. Oh, 1-3, 5-3. 3, you heading direct, steer point nine. Uh, did you guys hear that merge call? Hey, from. Force flight, dark star, caution, fur ball, threat broad 260, 14, 7000, fiber charge, friendly, Tomcat at Angel 22. 3, you heading direct, steer point 9. Yeah, they're 2 3 now. Thank 
Target ingress, what happened over the target area, uh, any notes on recovery, any losses that you had, and then some lessons learned um, or or just thoughts there. So any volunteers to go first? Start with OCA. Who's who is OCA? Is Belly here? Coors, Coors I site? think Easy is still landing. Yeah, I'm here. I'll go ahead and start with us. Um, departure um, and established into the uh, the hold stack went really smooth for us. Um, everything was good. Uh, timber sour almost the entire time. Mm -hmm. So we had very little SA. So we were it was hard mode for us at night. Uh, yeah, we we didn't know where our bandits were at. Um, I was able to talk to AIC. Um, I identified the hogs down low. Uh, I identified the north group, and there was a south group that I couldn't see on radar. Uh, on our first pass, we went in as a four ship with one and two in the lead in a spread. Three and four in trail. Um, our plan was to to come in, take our first volley of shots, and head back out. We couldn't get targeted on anything. Uh, there was just no targets for us other than the north group. So um, started to started to get ready to call away. Um, I got a missile warning. I turned defensive and blew up in the air. Um, two managed to dodge a couple of missiles and got back to safety. Um, three and four. I don't. I I haven't looked through the taxi yet. Where do you pick that up? Three and four. Uh, yeah. I mean, we uh. I Maybe not sharing the tech view, by the way, if you were doing that. Uh, I'm not sharing. No, we're not trying to do tech view right now. Yeah, we. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I think we got some missiles away in the first pass, but it was the same deal. It's like super hard, hard mode sorting anything, like radar contacts and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I got a missile away and survived the first volley. Uh, came back in to support my four and got schwacked. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I got two missiles off. I don't know what happened with them. Okay. Uh, I think our four did get a kill, um, and uh, two and four then just uh, continued, I think, uh, for a little bit and then checked out. I don't. All right. Uh, I can tell you from a mission design perspective, the loss of AWACS was not intentional. That was just a DCS being DCS type of thing. Um, so we'll investigate and figure out if we can fix that for next time. It might have just been, I don't know what, the, our Red 4 AWACS was was in and out the whole time too. So I don't know what was going on there. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, question, uh, question for Cream. Um, is there still a bug within DCS with uh, TACAN channels uh, jamming up the data link? That was an old Hornet thing. I don't know if that's happening with everybody or not. It could, it could very well be that. That sounds familiar to me. Uh, yeah, just curious. So that might be that might be one of the issues. Um, so I have to look at that. I think it's probably going to be airframe and module specific. So. Okay. Um, let's hear from any. Let's see. Let me look at the. Who else? So that was was that Bud that just debriefed. That was course. Course. Okay. Do we have anybody from Bud that would like to debrief? Are they still landing? Looks like they're still going down there. All right, skipping ahead to uh, Disco Flight. Anybody from Disco want to run through a debrief real quick? Yeah, so uh, Disco Flight primary mission was uh, suppressing the uh, TTR IADs. Um, departure flow went pretty good for us. Uh, we had uh, Dash 2 uh, CTD'd, so we stayed in the hold area a little bit longer than, or lineup area longer than we planned, uh, just to get him to regenerate. Um, on departure, realized that we were uh, timber sour, so had to revise our game plan because uh, we were planning on uh, just kind of watching data link, and then any time Oka looked to be trespassing the Tonopah IADs, we were gonna suppress with a harm. Uh, so we had to come up with a different game plan on that. So uh, apologies for my uh, martial hold; I was a little. Uh, 
a little sloppy on that while uh, trying to come up with the secondary game plan. Um, once uh, we uh, went Katrina, we pressed in. Um, because of the challenges without data link, uh, chose to split up our comms. So two and three were uh, monitoring strike common, and then I was up on the AIC freak. Uh, and then that way, without the data link, I could at least listen for somebody maybe uh, trespassing the uh, Tonopah IADs, or if somebody called defensive SA2 or SA6, uh, we were just going to rip off a harm, basically. Um, our uh, coordination seemed to go pretty good, uh, considering the challenges. Uh, one. Uh, one thing that we're looking into is uh, we did get a blue on blue within our flight, and uh, so it's looking like uh, our uh, uh, dash two or dash three may not have had a clear lane of fire on the shot, and uh, um, so uh, we're we're debriefing that more on that. Uh, and uh, so basically what we were, without the data link, our plan was uh, any contact within the IADs would be considered outlaw. Um, and then we were trying to get at least two to three factors of IFF uh, due to no data link. So we'd have the RWR, uh, mode four, and then either with a TGP or uh, a, you know uh, the best we can on it. But since uh, 16s on 16s in that northern, uh, IADS area, we chose to go lights on as our own flight just so we could deconflict super easy if we were to get into a furball. Um, we were able to uh, get harms off when it appeared that there was uh, people uh, getting close to the to Tonopah IADS, so uh, we were able, we felt like we were pretty effective with that at least. And uh, uh, coming off, uh, saw that we had a uh, Aircraft uh, on us on the exfil, but uh, we we still had the speed advantage, so we we pushed with the package instead of uh, turning right back in for a 120 face shot. Um, and uh, nice job not taking the bait on that one. Yeah, yeah. No, we were watching it like, uh, and I, I knew you guys would be like uh, hot on us, like you know, and going back on the tech view. Yeah, you guys were. So it just would have been a 120 face shot. Um, lessons learned. Um, what uh, was a challenge for us, what you know didn't work was the uh, not expecting the data link to be down. Uh, so we kind of had to work through that. The comms piece for us was a challenge just because we're supposed to be supporting uh, OCA and uh, but we were on the strike frequency also. So splitting out the comms was a little bit of a challenge since we had to kind of fall back on the radio comms without the data link just to kind of get that SA picture built up uh, on what was uh, going on with OCA, whether or not they were you know, going defensive uh, SAs, SA6 or SA2. Okay. Uh, question for Recky on that. Uh, was there, is this, is when you say like a strike freak and then an AIC freak is was it meant to be? All I thought it was all. I thought it was all the same freak. Okay. I might not have been clear in the briefing that. Okay. Like common so and for... AIC is all on channel. Right? Okay. So for... All right. So yeah, that. The... So what does it mean to say this for red flag events? Just assume everybody, including AIC, is all on the same freak. There's no separate uh, one. For Unless that. otherwise. Unless we. Yeah, but that's a good default. Uh, the thing we need to clarify in the briefing that's on us. So. Okay. Yeah, I, that's my bad. I I I I thought taxi two would be strike common, and we had a separate fighter common uh, thing going on, and then I must have missed the push uh, over to uh, Dark Star uh, okay. when we were in Marshall. Cool. So that's my bad on that. All right. Um, other than that. Uh, yeah, uh, good training points for us. Uh, as a group, we, we don't fly uh, night missions often, so it was a good training point for us to learn some uh, TTPs. And then uh, also, as well, uh, the challenges of working without a data link and still trying to coordinate with other flights. Cool. Oh, thanks for the notes there. I think those all make sense to me. Um, all right, moving down here to Gambler. Anybody from Gambler want to? This is optional, too. No, but you don't have to speak if you don't want to. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, obviously, it was uh, high on the scale of Milsim, so it was a great time for us. 
uh, just working through this chronologically, though, uh, we had a little bit of an issue with one of our guys pushed to talk in game on SRS, so we had to switch to Discord, which made comms even more of a nightmare um, for us, just because it was tough to hear. We were over talking uh, a lot of the actual like radio calls, so we had to like repeat or ask ourselves internally, like, "Hey, what did he just say?" So there, it was not ideal. Uh, and then also just the learning curve of you know we do a lot of ziplip naval stuff versus uh, Air Force departure, especially out of Nellis. Um, so there was a steep learning curve with that, but the the reality and the, the immersion was was awesome. So we're just behind the curve on that. Um, ingress uh, to Marshall, we too, just like, um, I'm sorry, the flight before us, I've forgotten their, um, their call sign already. The disco. Disco flight. We, I guess, also were under the under the understanding that uh, we were going to remain on Taxi Two and not switch to or push up to uh, to the AIC channel. So uh, I I don't know how we both missed that, but we were just talking about that amongst ourselves in our flight. Um, and then I think that we, I think Disco may have pushed early at, at Katrina instead of Irene. We did our best to time or uh, time our uh, pet shot at. Um, I think Irene plus 11, but I think we were told to engage maybe, I don't know, 90 seconds early. Um, but otherwise, it was most for the most part uneventful, uh, other than I think that we stuck to the plan. We did switch uh, to try to support the OCA flights, because I think that uh, from at least what we could tell on our end, that a lot of the flights were returning to uh, to get uh, gas. So we, we wanted to stick around in the area and support what we could. Um, it, from what we could tell, there was at least uh, two F-16 flights to, that were kind of acting as singletons. <clears throat> they seemed to vary in uh, in altitude a lot. Like there was a hunter killer, like high low, and uh, that they were trying to draw us inside their SA-2 Wes. Uh, so it was just a lot of a, uh, and especially without um, the uh, AWACS being down, SA was extremely intermittent. So we yeah. uh, we did our best to flow hot and cold, and uh, of course they didn't get drawn out until everybody was cold and. They tried to intercept the uh, us, but uh, uh, for the most part, that was it. And then, of course, checking back in was, uh, again, equally as a nightmare as, as leaving um, Nellis' uh, control space just for a lack of, uh, I guess, training awareness on our part. So that's, uh, for the most part, where we were at, but ultimately really enjoyed it. Uh, Mace, did you have anything else to add? Because you probably have a, a more astute uh, uh Angle out of no, it than I do. I, I definitely think you hit uh, all the, the, the high level DLOs. Um, I know, looking at the TAC view right now, it looks like we took out, I, I think we lobbed six by Magnums on the first volley, and we were able to uh, suppress, if not take down, that Southern SA2. So, yeah, happy about that. Okay. And that, yeah, nothing else to add. Uh, cool. I think those are all great notes. A couple things that I. Uh, what I want to point out, the digital controller guys, the D guys with DC is their tag. They live to do this kind of stuff. That's what their whole group is about. So if you guys want to schedule some practice with them, I'm sure they'd love to, to walk through it with you uh, and uh, get the get the full land-based uh, air traffic control experience from them if you wanted to practice. So, um, And then yeah, and expanding on... into carrier stuff soon. Sure, there you go, yeah. Um, and then another thing on the harms, uh, the the suppressive shots. Um, I like I don't I don't want to. So the way the IADS script works is like if it detects a missile coming at a SAM site, it'll shut the radar down. So launching six harms is as effective as launching one, right. generally. So I don't want to dissuade anybody from doing real real world tactics, but um, just something to think about whether because then that sort of. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to dictate what you guys do, but uh, just a thought. Cool. Hey, Kareem. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, question, yeah. question for you. So we were actually having that uh, internal discussion during the pre-brief. What was the intent to have um, sort of a, um, a a steady stream of magnums coming out? We, I guess we were we were weighing what you guys meant by the uh, the pet shots at Irene plus eleven. Yeah. If you wanted a volley, or if you wanted uh, just constant suppression. Well, it's it's about so this the way it will the way it works is the operators quote unquote operators will stay off the air for a uh, set period of time and it's a it's kind of a random between a high and a low period of time and so they might stay off for five minutes they might stay off for seven minutes uh, they might stay off for two minutes so 
Um, that's given that they detected the harm coming at them, or that the ayats detected the harm coming at them. Um, so a volley, uh, all of them with the same, you know, fired at the same time, have the same PK or whatever, same suppressive effect as just one. So you could have saved some missiles. I can offer something on that too. Go ahead. Um, so it's a good question, and I didn't give you guys the details on that early on because uh, I, I, I honestly didn't want to dive down this rabbit hole in the in the mission planning part. But it's something worth thinking about for sure. Now, <clears throat> the the you know best answer per se would be yes launch one every x amount of time pick you know 30 seconds a minute two minutes whatever that's ideal for suppression because you're generating a longer suppression window which is the whole point of harms however break break uh our harms for some of these flights are coming off actually for all of these flights are coming off of our backup oca and for the air i want your harms off your jets as quickly as possible so your jet isn't fucking you know handcuffed and you can contribute to the air fight easier without having to worry about that extra thousand pounds on your wing. So that's <clears throat> that's the other side of it. The, the, you know, the first side is I want you to take your time with the harms and hold on to them as long as possible for actual reactive shots. But the other side is I want you to get rid of them as quickly as possible so you can be in the air fight better. Uh, so you kind of have to find a balance point, and that's like your decision as flight lead plus you know the constraints from the mission commander. I, th I think that we did interpret that that message and and opted to intentionally just dump them just to get out of there. Maybe next time, what we would do is is kind of X out and just so we don't fly asymmetrical, have one launch two minutes later, two can launch and then uh, et cetera. That way, we get, we could expand the suppression window number one and then not fly asymmetrically and then get in the air fight, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. Sweet. Yeah. Right. On on a disco flight, our plan was. Uh, uh, to have lead uh, shoot off their first missiles and then go air to air, and then uh, uh, but I ended up taking an air to air shot while still having a harm, but I purposely took low PK just to push them defensive back into their IADs just to keep them contained. Um, but yeah, so it was a little bit of a challenge. We wanted to have that suppression window in case Oka was to uh, penetrate the IADs. But yeah, it was like weighing, like, do I carry these and keep them just in case? So we kind of stretched it out a little bit, but we felt like we were still somewhat effective in that uh, su suppression in the northern part there. Okay, hey, great. Crane. So, yeah, go ahead. Just wanted to say, so, like, Bud Flight's finally on deck, and we just came in late, just if, if we missed anything important already. Uh, we'll come back to you guys. What I want to cool. do is, so, let's, so first of all, let me say that all great notes, that's what we're all about here, is like the, that, like, next level tactics and dcs um so good good notes on harm shots i want to take a quick pause and go to the atc do a quick atc debrief so uh quantify or somebody do you guys want to just yes, yeah. through how things went yeah thanks right i'll preface it by saying it's probably an alien experience to most of us to have to recover that many airplanes so far so good job on everyone um most of the issues that came up are things that can be resolved very easily with just practice uh misinterpreting calls spending more time on the radio than, than necessary uh, either spending too long to descend or doing it way too quickly, etc. It's just things that will come naturally as we do more and more training. Um, so, uh, so we had a couple of separation violations, which were one of them was my fault, one of them was due to miscommunication, but they were at least resolved quickly. So thanks to more or less everyone for listening really well and correcting things, and especially splitting out into your flights, because I recognize that might be alien to most of you. If you want to take questions or discuss it, I'm happy to know, and I'll let the other controller speak. Just quick, quickly, real curious, were those separation issues on the runway or airborne? No, nope, airborne. Um, oh. So at one point, I had a flight, um, I think they were, I can't remember exactly, they were on the go around, I think, and they were rejoining. And they uh, ended up dropping to two miles instead of three, which is, it's small, but it's you know, still something. So a lot of it is just in me not having experience of managing that many approaches at once especially because they all came at once rather than in a small sequence. So we ended up having to slowly reach them out, like we said in the we're, brief. We're but... going to mention that that was, for at least a short period of time for Quantify, higher workload than London Heathrow at peak times, <laughs> who have probably four <laughs> controllers managing the approaches. Like <laughs> That was a bit terrifying, yeah, but we, we got for it. Awesome. Okay. Anything else from the controllers, ATC stuff? Uh, talk times are weird. I'm not used yeah. to the procedures. <laughs> cool. Thanks. From uh, right. grounds, yeah. it was, it was if great you want more grounds. practice, let us know. We're, we always yeah. we need to practice as well. So. Yeah, put up the link to your guys' Discord in general. 
Yeah, it will be. Um, I'll hit now. Uh, if any of you guys want to host a full, like, possible red flag practice session for all of these tricky procedures, we can throw in holds, ILS, PAR, tack and step down, tack and holds, fix holds, whatever. Um, let me know if you're interested and we can organize something here because it might be worth us just going over all of those boring IFR procedures just to make sure we don't have we, chaos. We also like, enjoy controlling the really weird procedures, so. We do. There you go, if we you want them. a PAR azimuth only, please. <laughs> we, we found the uh, only DCS group that loves controlling and doesn't want to fly ever, so we love it. All right, yeah, yeah, cool. Group, yeah. All right, so let's keep going here. Cowboy one. Uh, actually, so let me let me circle back. Uh, Bud one, do you guys want to talk real quick? I have this kind of template up if you want to follow it. Sure. Uh, Bud one one, flight of four F-18s. Our primary mission was OCA. Um, I'll keep it to the high points for the purposes of faster, funnier, uh, but just for departure, like admin related stuff. Um, I think some of the FAA versus ICIO phraseology stuff is already probably well known to DC. Uh, awesome group, uh, awesome work for the departure overall. There was one confusion on like uh, hold short, but uh, it all worked out and not a big deal. Um, I was kind of surprised that we didn't get squawks assigned, but oh, that's a minor thing. Um, we were negative timber all day. Well, not all day. There were short bursts of timber activity, um, which was weird to say the least and that's gonna that's gonna probably be the largest factor of affecting the fight overall um and then oh only other learning point that i'll share for the group was uh nvgs with the environmentals and the in the um fight tonight was they were not very helpful purely for the reason of it was a clear in a million moonless night which doesn't help nvgs and all the stars in the sky also doesn't help nvgs so um for that, plus a couple other factors that we'll handle in our own flight, uh, our, it was difficult to achieve SA uh, on the overall fight. Uh, and as a result, we're going to get to the Katrina plus 10 criteria for Irene rather than being super shit hot uh, OCA and wiping them all out. That said, I do think we did a good job from my limited SA. If, if that's not what happened, I'm, I'm curious to know. But that's pretty much uh, all that I have uh, up to the recovery. And then for the recovery, uh, we we tanked for the RTB, which is a really good decision as it turned out. Uh, the hold was uneventful. Uh, there were some growing pains coming down the chute for the approach, but uh, overall, uh, all aircraft on deck. Um, I'll make a write-up and toss it into somewhere uh, with more details later, but that's all I've got. Anybody have anything for me, mission commander related? Was was everything relayed appropriately uh, about Katrina and Irene? Those calls were made. You know, Taxi Two and AIC did an awesome job rogering that stuff up. Did everybody? Did everybody have good essay to what the timeline was throughout the mission? Definitely. Yeah, Disco was good on that. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, with that, I'm out. And from the ATC guys, stellar communication on the Tacan approach with talk done. Excellent. Sweet. Cool. Okay. Good. Um, cowboy. Tide or somebody? Yeah. So uh, we're Cowboy, four ship F-15s on strike. Uh, we were hitting target nine, which was the three buildings in the church to avoid. Uh, departure was pretty uneventful. We had a different game plan in place, but I, I need to start reading briefings more, and that's on me. Uh, we were expecting a much sooner left turn, not 11 miles. I read it as 1.1. I was like, ah, that's pretty That's pretty sharp, but okay. Uh, so we got that corrected. DC did a great job. We were never really confused where we were. For the ingress, so when we went in, our timing was all jacked. Um, I know 3 and 4 did a 360 to alleviate timing, and then by the time we were actually on push, we were showing like 30 seconds late. Uh, so our timing was just jacked up the whole day, which is something we'll work on. Uh, coming from the Viper, where you have really good TOTs, to the Eagle, where it's like it's a guessing game and a lot of math. I'm not very good at math. Uh, the Red Air pushed us in pretty well, and I think that came down to I wasn't correlating well for the flight in our position. The Red Air was stupidly close, watching the tack view when we thought they were at least 60 more miles away. I know 3 had his radar up, he was watching, and our 2s doesn't really give good info on where everything is, just that we're getting locked. I had no threats at all the entire way in. 
and I double checked my twos was on, but I never got locked. Two got blasted by Recky, and then three got blasted by Road Dog because they just completely just pushed in, and there was no help it seemed like. But we were also on an island at that point. Uh, we smoked our targets. We had good BDA, and then we just egress as a two ship recovery. We held for a while. But it was everything was pretty straightforward. And the approach the first time, I'm not sure what happened. I think we checked in and maybe separation. It was separation. <laughs> yeah, separation decreased too much, so we couldn't get the landing clearance out IFR. Ah, that makes more sense. Yeah, we were speed was getting a little tough because we had speed restrictions, altitude restrictions. We were trying to slow down, and then when we went into the 360. It just kind of collapsed, so that makes sense. I was curious, but that's on us. Yeah, flying the strike yeah. eagle at uh, 200 knots is not great. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough to maintain 200, but we managed and we got our spacing once we uh, got cleared the actual approach, and it went pretty uneventful from there. Um, um, I will take blame over. for this. But I didn't actually realize that you weren't with a talk down because I failed to manage my strip properly, so that's my fault. Oh no, worries. It was, we didn't even notice anything went wrong, but. <laughs> That's how it should be. We're just like, all right, we're on another vector. Let's go, guys. Let's just go back out. So, just for everybody's awareness, on that note, you can massively help out the approach controllers uh, if you so choose, and unless it's like no kidding, a DLO for them by once you have like the runway in sight by taking a visual approach instead, and that kind of erases or knocks down a lot of their separation requirements. Ah, uh, like... we didn't know that. Um, I was just expecting ILS all the way through. And with the talk down and everything going on, but we had runway captured pretty early, so we could have done that. I didn't know that was an option. Uh, well, on the ILS, from... it's really not so much of a problem, but been... on uh, PAR, it's really nice if you do, <laughs> because yeah. they're just so high workload for us. A couple notes from Cowboy One Three. I know I got shot down and I got caught between uh, had bombs off and then got uh, launched on by one of the MIGs. Uh, one thing that was obviously in the F-15, we have very little SA coming in. And so I kind of had thought that the uh, OCA guys were sticking around as opposed to egressing away. Um, and uh, AIC didn't really give us any information. Uh, the only call about MIGs within the target area was a single F-16 threat to strike group call. And it would have been nice to have a little bit more hand-holding for the strike flights because the fact that we're kind of out there on our own a little bit. But uh, that could have been my fault if I missed something or if I uh, wasn't paying attention to ex exactly where the OCA guys are. Um, the only bandit I really had on my radar on the ingress into the target area was the uh, AWACS that was out beyond the target area. But uh, it, was, it was really fun and interesting. I'm glad that my palms actually guided into the target even after I got shot down. So that was fun. So for uh, the uh, OCA piece, from my understanding, and I, I don't have the truth data handy because I haven't taken a look at the tech view yet, so I'll be diving into that later on. Um, yeah. But the intent was certainly to have OCA after the initial pushback to have them remaining on station and pinning the north, uh, specifically the north region, but um, you know any remaining fighters in the south as well, including the AWACS. OCA was supposed to be essentially maintaining two caps-ish uh, to try to protect the strike route. Uh, like I said, I don't know how that actually worked out uh, based on the two biggest issues would have been geometry management of the actual space. And then the other one, the other one was obviously fuel. So I'm curious of how the, um, how the actual geometry worked out as well as how the timeline uh, for coverage actually worked out. I yeah, can, it just I kind of seemed like uh, the uh, strike flights. On AIC as well. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to no, talk over you. No, uh, go ahead. And it I, just I, kind I of seemed like... And then as AIC once you're done. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm the one who got shot down. So in the end, it's kind of my fault for getting shot down. But it kind of seemed like the, uh, the strike flights were kind of blundered into enemy MIGs without really much warning and much um, additional situational awareness given to them by the AIC. Um, but, you know, you guys might have seen a different picture from up in the uh, E3 for sure. Yeah, if, if I'll, I'll make it quick just because I know we got to move on. But, uh, but the from an AIC standpoint, so the 
when uh, you guys had first rolled in, uh, there was I didn't get a check in with most of the uh, the strike guys there, and I I tried reaching out at the start of the fight. Well, I still had a bit of time, and uh, there yeah, was no just... response on the initial check in. So I think it was that mixed broken comms. How we how we had said there was a sort of a miscommunication on what freak the strike guys were on. Uh, so I was treating most of you guys as Nordo because uh, I tried to do an initial check in. You guys didn't respond. I figured comms were bent in some form or another. So I was just focusing on trying to get OCA down there to support. Uh, but you're right, the geometry was sort of played a factor with the container there. And then um, I was trying to get, uh, so Bud was working the north. I was trying to get cores down to support you guys. Um, I was calling them out. And then as they started pressing in and becoming more of, more of a threat, that's when I, uh, it was a little late of a call on my part. I should have recommended the commit to cores sooner. Um, but yeah, I did end up getting cores down there to try and support you. But it was, uh, that was one of the lessons learned for me. I could have done that earlier. And um and yeah, I think the the mix of like the the picture being bent or the the link being sour and uh, just a delayed response initially for cores sort of left you guys stranded. But uh, but once again, I think a lot of it boiled down to the lack of comms. Uh, there was plenty of threat calls I didn't give you guys because I didn't think you were on net because I never got the for for a lot of you the mm -hmm. first time first call I got from some of the strike guys were when you were RTB, uh, and that was the first call I got from any of the strike guys. So that's just another thing as well. Just make sure uh, make sure you're checking in just so I know you're on net. So we we did check in. We were stuck with focus for a while, and we were already deep on push. And shit was hitting okay. the fan. And all I all I said was cowboy on station. I could have said strike pushing or whatever I said with focus. Uh, but we tried, but it was just way too contested environment. But we were able to use some of the bulls calls. But again, I was janked out and couldn't uh, correlate fast enough to realize how close they were. I mean, they were within like 15 miles of us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, there was definitely a main takeaway for me though was uh, for sure on that one. I I could have had uh, uh, given cores the recommended commit earlier. Uh, that's really the the main takeaway for me for what the the support to the strike guys are. Could it be in the future that uh, potentially a good idea to just uh, broadcast in the blind then, even if you if you think that they're maybe not on on frequency. Um, well, were yeah, you I... talking to Focus as well? Was Focus saying, "Hey, I'm pushing these guys to you now," or? Because that was also focus pushed us. Oh, we were already. I was well going to say, I, I tried to keep track of the timeline, recommend push to each of the elements, the, you know, mm -hmm. the seed, the strike, etc. cetera. Um, and one of the things I did say is I, I recommended that you guys, you know, monitor, push to yeah, that, that monitor that it was a very busy frequency. I didn't want you to like break into the middle of an active intercept and try to check in in the middle of that. That's why I told you to go ahead and monitor it. Um, but again, that was something that was not coordinated expectation wise between Dark Star and I, and that that definitely could have been done better. Um, worth, worth considering uh, in a situation like this to have, since we have the manpower for it, which is unusual, to have a dedicated OCA frequency and a dedicated strike frequency. So that way, somebody is able to dedicate their attention to making sure Strike knows what's going on. And I, I do agree with that one, because the especially having the link down, um, I was trying to push out more picture calls without with, while still trying to keep the air clear and stuff like that. So if we did have those frequencies split, uh, that way, yeah, we're guaranteeing that the Strike guys are getting getting the calls that they need, the support that they need, while we're still making sure that the uh, the red air is getting uh, getting pushed in. So Okay, that's I think that's... All I good. think the no, Vipers would be the only we, ones. We need, to, we, need to, we need to continue here. Um, that's fine. Is we'll figure one? out the comms plan. Uh, Sorry, is it okay if I quickly bust it? Sure. Uh, yeah, so the ATC guys are broken out for a debrief. Could we have a tag a few cents to us around now by any chance? Yeah, Sorry. I'll drop it in general. Okay. Yes, right. See you guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, so what, I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is uh, kind of a little bit of conflicting things here where we're kind of like trying to keep everybody on on strike, including all AIC comms and everything like that that may not be... That's something we'll take a look at. And let me drop this in general real quick. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll circle back on that and uh, figure out what the right, uh, especially for this size of an operation, we got um, kind of exceeded our capacity on this on comp. Cause that sounds not like comms were an issue. So I'm going to move on here. It's all super good notes, and I'm glad people are bringing it up. And this is the kind of the conversations we want to have in this event series. Uh, we want to have a. Uh, Issues where there's uh, we get a lot of manpower and we need to figure out how to spend it adequately or efficiently. All right, moving to Chief Two Spectre or somebody in that group want to speak? Yeah, yeah, I can speak. Uh, so we're Chief Two, flight of four. Uh, we were doing strike. We ended up having only three because one guy had severe technical difficulties right off the bat. 
Um, so he ended up reinstalling DCS, but he wasn't available to come back in time. Um, Ouch. But for the majority of us, this was the first time at Red Flag. Uh, just want to say thanks for the invite. It was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. Um, the departure went smooth. We had Viking kind of hand-holding a little bit just on the expectations and how things are supposed to be done. So big thanks to him. Um, I really had a lot of fun. But target ingress, all that. We went up, got into our Marshall hold. Um, I was tier five, and that went really smooth. We pushed on Irene. Plus four, everything looked solid. Um, we were a little bit early, uh, and I ended up getting smacked by an Amram. I believe two and three ended up getting their bombs off. Um, but right before, I think about 30 seconds to release, I, I got smacked. So after that, I was gone. So Viking, I don't know if you want to chime in on the rest. Yeah, I can chime in. Um, I thought it went well. I agree with Spectre a bit. Uh, we were a little bit early uh, before our TOT time, um, but we had noticed that the rest of the strike package was put, pushing with us, so we didn't want to find fall behind and then you know really be subject to the SAMs or the the cap, which kind of backfired on us because obviously we you know encountered the cap. Um, we did hit two of our three targets. Uh, we did miss the, the last one because we egressed uh, since there was cap in the area right after hitting those first two. Uh, stayed west and north of the container, um, and then came in for recovery to Nellis. Um, I know the DC guys jumped out of here, and it was mentioned earlier, just the, the speed restrictions on the Eagle, uh, flying it at 200 knots is, is a little difficult. So we did wind up, I actually wound up a little bit too close to a Hornet um, on an ILS approach, so they waved me off and, and gave me the go around, which was actually kind of fun to you know go back into the pattern and loop back around to Arco. Um, as far as just to kind of get touch on lessons learned, I guess, um, I think our tactics worked well, and I think our coordination between the flight was very good. Um, I think an overall pish, uh, issue mission-wise was that the strike flights you know, all kind of wound up in the area too early. Uh, maybe all of us should have egressed if, if there was a dedicated strike comm. Uh, command could have pushed us out and allowed for uh, OCA to clear the airspace a little bit more uh, before we headed back in. But I thought comms, execution, um, you know, control. I thought everything went great. It sounds like we had a missed opportunity for a spin call, is what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we had dedicated, again, I don't want to go long down and kind of go off on a tangent for you guys, but I think if we had a dedicated controller for strike that was mentioned earlier, that strike controller could have said, hey, wait, we've got, you know, eight or 10 jets pushing in. They're too close to the action here. Let's, you know, have them push out 10 or 20 miles and loop back around in, which would have given us the correct spacing and would not have put us, in, you know, our strike or the Cowboy strike flight in the danger of the uh, the F-16s that we wound up so close to. Okay, all good notes, I think. Um, thank you. Welcome, and uh, nice job on your first one in Red Flag. Uh, all right, Panther, 14s. Hello, we're Panther 4, a flight of two F-14s. Our primary mission was striking the logistics center in Red Land. Um, main kind of overarching theme of this red flag was technical issues. Uh, in particular, uh, there was, an, I believe, an SRS server configuration issue that caused the Rios in both of our jets to be unable to communicate on SRS. They were Nordo the entire mission. So we ended up resorting uh, strictly to Discord comms between the pilots and Rios. Um, one of our Rios, uh, Whistler, who was in my jet, he also had a, an unrelated DCS issue that prevented him from actually spawning in until we were almost on top of the target. So as a result of that, uh, my workload was but between that and also having to do the entire uh, departure and approach uh, using strictly TACAN navigation uh, without waypoints, uh, my workload was extremely high and I was kind of struggling to stay ahead of the jet. Um, big props to Perp and Jag for uh, having my back on the radios and at least helping me keep on my SA up. Departure itself, aside from the high workload, was fairly uneventful. Uh, I think it, it went pretty much according to plan. Um, from our perspective, we had very little SA from the time that we pushed. Um, we did get told to switch over to the strike common, and as soon as we switched over, uh, there was immediately radio traffic going on, managing intercepts, so 
I don't think we ever bothered checking in there because we were too sat- task satted to actually listen for a break. We were just worried about uh, managing the ingress. Um, our Dash 2 uh, defended an air-to-air shot from one of the Red F-16s, uh, managed to survive that. Uh, we came in. It looked like one of the F-15s hit one of our targets. Uh, we were able to confirm that it was hit in the in, from both of our perspectives. I'm not sure what exactly happened there. Um, we put bombs on target. We egressed. Uh, recovery was fairly uneventful. No losses for you guys? No losses. Fantastic. Okay, cool. We'll look at the SRS thing. Um, we now have our own. We weren't running on it tonight, but we have our own red flag dedicated server that pay for. So next event, maybe we'll be on that and we can yeah. uh, we'll control them. So. Our, our, our kind of initial hunch is that it had something to do with setting the coalition secure radios flag. Could be. It sounds like that helped. That screwed up the F-15s as well. We'll we'll look into it, and uh, I have I'm a I can bug the SRS guy to see if that would cause issues to Siri Bob or whatever his name is. Cool. Okay. One mm-hmm. minor note for you, real quick. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Arco probably not a good call sign for a tanker in uh, the knitter. Oh, good point. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that did come up at one point. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. Like uh, we had uh, one flight <laughs> named Hawk and one flight named Hog. And nice. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, moving down here, speaking of Hog, um, any Hog guys want to jump in? Yep, I got it. All right, so we're uh, Hog Flight 6 and 7. Uh, our primary mission was Deed. Departure was good. Everybody, comms were good on departure. Ingress times on target were good. We were actually just a minute behind uh, after the 10 minutes on Irene. Like, we pushed in early, you know, thinking we were, you know, going to be late, I guess. Uh, but we ended up you know, pushing a couple minutes early. So we made a hold, and then we came back in, but we were, our missiles hit the target, like, just a minute after the uh, initial uh, 10 minutes after Irene. So we, we only had t- two minutes to spare after that. Um, so we ended up shacking everything just a minute after the uh, Irene plus 14. So we kind of broke our window there with uh, shacking targets. Um Recovery is good, so we'll, we'll debrief losses here. So we lost two airplanes on the ingress. It looks like they got shot down by red air. Uh, there's not much we could do there. We were just NOE, heads down, looking at the ground. Um, we did get nails, but we didn't get any spikes. So uh, in my flight, right, we didn't even get any missile warnings or anything. All we saw was uh, the first two guys go down. And so we kind of orbited for a sec, trying to see what happened. We, we went into air-to-air mode, trying to see if we could see any bandits but we didn't so we just pushed on and went to our hold and waited for irene um as far as uh when we were engaging targets uh we had to make we only made two passes we did uh you know on the first pass there was only three of us so we had to break up the targets you know one and two took each of the two uh shore reds at the first target and then two took the uh one by itself then we looped around uh, to accidentally shack the truck because uh, the Maverick, you know, there was a truck like maybe like 10 feet in front of the, the shore ride, so I had to make a second pass on that. And then I took the uh, second SAM at the second site. We just went home, and recovery was good. Uh, comms were all good there, and pretty much it. That's all I got. Okay, um, so was there... Who was supposed to be your your OCA or escort for air-to-air stuff on that section, or, or was there somebody dedicated? I, I don't think there was. I, th- I thought we were really just on our own, doing our own thing. Okay, it really kind of felt like it. Course had the course. Course had the south. Okay, so we saw uh, leading edge hogs there. So that was weird. So I can tell you from I shot at you because we thought, okay, these OCA guys are being cheeky. Because why would there be hogs out front? So, so we, we thought, yeah, our push time was six minutes before okay. Katrina, right? And so that's what we did. We pushed six minutes before Katrina, which was zero four four four, and that's exactly when we pushed. Okay. Yeah, as I take. Briefing. So. I take the blame on the A-10 deaths. Uh, my idea was that at six minutes, the the OCA would have pushed and then been ahead of the A-10s, and then it would have been obvious to the um, the red players that they were the OCA immediate threat, and we'd go after them. Because we had no data link or anything, First contacts that we saw were a bunch of cheeky dudes at 6,000 feet. Like, oh, these! this is the leading edge. And we dove in, and then we saw the rest of the OCA leading edge. And we're like, oh, fuck, that was the hogs. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, we apologize. No. We were not trying to kill any hogs. There was a time later in the mission where uh, Reki was playing AIC a little bit, and I said, "These guys down here are hogs, right?" Let's not. Yeah, he said, "Don't, don't shoot those guys." So that was not our goal. It's never our goal. Though, like we were trying to go after the fast boys. So we apologize on that one uh, to the hog guys. But uh, we'll take that one. That was our first PVP, yeah? Or yeah, that was the first. Uh, yeah, that was so, the first yeah. kill. <laughs> Lesson learned. Thanks, thanks for being the sacrificial pony hog. Yeah, thank you. With, uh, somebody said they thought you were Talds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Thanks, hog guys. Hope you had fun anyway. You guys schwacked your targets. Mission success. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'll uh, I'll talk for Cutlass first, and then let Recky give his his um, one for Dagger, and then the um, the whole event as a whole. Uh, so I'll, I'll quick, go quickly here since we didn't have to, you know, departure, whatever, whatever. Um, so I think we need to kind of go over like launch and leave tactics and sort of BVR flows and things like that. Uh, that's, that's the main thing I saw just in a quick look at attack view. So I'd be happy to do that, uh, at some point this week during the week, maybe at night, uh, at weeknight. And we'll kind of do some, we'll try to like do a deep dive and, and figure that out. So I'm seeing like, you know, people dying unnecessarily to, to AMRAMs and, and, and that kind of stuff. So that was my main takeaway. Uh, we were, we had data link coming in and out again as well. So we were just as tumbleweed as, as you guys, um, maybe less so because we have less to worry about and more targets to shoot at. So I'll say for dagger flight, um, had some good battles with people, um, I got chased out of the AO, and then the strikers, most of the strikers made it to their targets. So I felt like uh, you guys did a good job on keeping your SA up, even though we were all not expecting the data link thing. So that's that's it for me in Cutlass Flight. Um, Recky, you want to take us home? Yeah, I, uh, I, I think you covered everything for the uh, Red 4 flight side. I just want to talk a little bit on the mission planning side, kind of what my thoughts of how the mission was going to go. Um, my expectation was uh, OCA was going to push in, they'd have this initial volley, they'd kind of work it out, and then they'd, because they had the numbers against the Red 4, they'd be able to push the Red 4 back, and I was expecting Red to be hiding over those SAM sites the entire time. Like, pushed all the way up against those SAM sites, and Blue's just spinning circles around shooting at them anytime red uh turns back hot um so those sam sites there and then also down to the south kind of setting up a cap over the target um what what i kind of saw what happened is that uh the blue had this great initial volley that came on um and then they kind of blue backpedaled more than red backpedaled and then the uh phase line where blue and red was meeting was a lot further forward than I had expected. Uh, and I think that that started to cause the geometry issues uh, that people started seeing. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought everything went about as well as it could in Pitch Black Night, uh, and so I'm glad that uh, most people had fun. I'd be willing to bet that uh, untimely cold ops for um, Bud Flight, at least, would be probably the one of the greater contributors to that. I, I'm just guessing. I need to take a look at it myself, but that's that's where my money's at. Cool. Yeah, we'll All take right. a look. That wraps up 23.5, I think. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Recky on this. He did a, went above and beyond, put in so much work on this. Uh, I was just a spectator, so he deserves... Uh, the credit, uh, the blame is shared amongst all of us, of course. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, thanks, Recky, even going as far as recruiting some of you off the PS forums, which is wild to me. That um, so that was great. Um, thanks everybody for coming out. Special thanks to the digital controllers. Anybody who was playing the controller role, that's what makes the event work. So appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming out, and we'll schedule a, like a deep a deep dive on the tech view, hopefully for 